I've been a zoning and land use lawyer here in Delaware for 20 years. And I'm here to engage you in what I think is the most important project of my career. And that is to put me out of business. And I've decided that I need every single person's help, every individual's help I can muster to do that. And this is an especially mission critical time in Delaware's future to undertake this. Why do I think this is important? Well, we've experienced a lot of corporate losses here, a lot of loss of our manufacturing base. Maybe not as uniquely as some other places in the country, but here in Delaware especially, we've been plagued by something that I think we have to get rid of, but something that makes my services really necessary. Now, what do I do? I'm not a cannibal or anything like that, but what I do is I help people get government approvals to change the use of land, to change the built environment. So I've got nursing homes approved, residential subdivisions, schools. There are places where people in Delaware go every day that I had something to do with getting that approved. The problem is business is too good. It's too necessary for people to have me in the process. It's making it too expensive. It's killing small entrepreneurial projects and businesses that we really need to have in Delaware in order to go into the future. And most of you have probably heard the phrase nimbyism, not in my backyard. But what is it really? Well, in my practice, I've come to think of nimbyism as a situation where it's socially, politically, and culturally acceptable to say no to say no to somebody's new job, to say no to an apartment complex that is going to possibly take some people here in Wilmington out of poverty housing for the first time in their lives, to say no to somebody whose growing family just requires them to maybe put an addition on their house. So recently, I had somebody in my office up on the 16th floor here downtown talking about strategy for adding one single unit, one single unit to a dilapidated building that he was using his own money to rehabilitate here in Wilmington. We have a big poverty housing problem here in Wilmington. This person is standing there with a checkbook, ready to invest in Wilmington, ready to invest in the first state. That shouldn't require a strategy. That shouldn't require legal help. That should just require going down and getting the permits and getting started. But it's not that easy. And as a matter of fact, it's been getting harder. And I've realized that this isn't a legal problem. You know, lawyers are used to, we have a problem, we negotiate, if that doesn't work, we go to court. But that's not what's going to fix this because this is a cultural problem. It's individual people every day who decide they don't want something to happen, and they're willing to participate in the process of nimbyism or the process of no. So what I conceptualize in nimbyism as visually is something that is literally eating our jobs, our schools, the new factories, the new built environment that's really going to take us into the next phase of the economy. Now, when you're trying to get out of something, sometimes it's worthwhile to think about how you got there. And I NIMBYism is all over the country. This is not unique to Delaware. But I think there are some things about Delaware that make it a little bit acute. So in the 90s when I came here, I remember going to look at houses. And the sort of hysterical thing about that is if you looked at five houses in one day, about three of them, you'd go into the basement and you'd realize there was this little stack of engineering books, magazines, old ones, sometimes going back to the 50s. Why? because everyone worked for the DuPont company, right? <laughs> well, when everybody works for a few big corporations and becomes a little bit reliant on that and focused on that, what does it make it easy to do? Those new economic sparks, the different uses, the changes that are necessary to do that new entrepreneurial thing, it becomes a lot easier to say no because we're not economically dependent on it. There's also this awesome thing, or bad thing, depending on how you look at it, called the Delaware Way. And, <laughs> and what the Delaware Way is, basically, is that 
a bunch of elites get in a cherry paneled room and we fix things, or we believe that we can fix things. We come up with great stuff like the Delaware General Corporate Law, the Banking Act, things that have brought international positive economic activity and attention and have really pulled us out of some terrible economic doldrums in the past. I'm also a member of the Delaware Business Roundtable. We interviewed over 100 Delawareans recently. We came up with sort of a short list of what the challenges are for us to transform our economy. And one of the things everybody consistently said is we have a silver bullet mentality here and we're just too reliant on the large corporations and the big fix. I don't think that's what the future is going to be for us economically. So how do we shift our focus? How do we start saying yes to something that's different, something that's not what we did before? Well, I'll tell you what it's not going to be. It's not going to be looking for that silver bullet solution. So Caesar Rodney is a very famous Delawarean. His statue is down on Rodney Square. And what Caesar Rodney did, for those of you who don't know, is on July 1st, 1776, he got on a horse. He rode 70 miles up to Philadelphia in a thunderstorm. And he broke the deadlock in the Delaware delegation to the Continental Congress so that Delaware could join 11 other states and we could declare our independence from Great Britain. He was very sick. It was a long ride. It was no picnic. It took a lot of grit and determination. But think about the impact that it had on the history of the United States and the history of the world. Caesar Rodney was just one person. This is one of those things that is going to require every Delawarean to have that mentality that they can be the Caesar Rodney of ending NIMBYism. This is a swamp, but we can ride out of it. But it's going to require that everyone feels that they have to be engaged. Now, Delaware's uniquely NIMBY culture is really just a no to new investment in the first state. It's a no to people who have their checkbook open and they're willing to write some kind of new investment in a new factory, a new job, or a new use. So we gotta stop saying no to those people. Well, that's something that every single one of us can do individually. So here I have our friend, Mr. Bill, sitting on the steps of Capitol Hill, waiting to go off to the White House for the president to sign. I just want to emphasize that, as in, in the past, there were a lot of great things that happened legislatively that made us be able to sit back as Delawareans and not really have to do that much. There's not really a legislative solution to this. I sat down and thought, how can we change the law to fix these things? I don't think we can. I think every one of us has to decide that we're going to stop participating in the culture of no. Now, sometimes it helps to get your head out of your, your own sandbox. So I went and looked at what had happened in the Tenderloin District in San Francisco. Now, some of you are probably aware that things are going kind of well in San Francisco right now economically, right? I mean, there should be no, no, nobody should be left behind in San Francisco right now in terms of rehabilitation because the demand for housing is huge. Well, there's a movement coming out of San Francisco or California in general right now called Yes in My Backyard. And the tenderloin is an example of why it's strictly necessary. There's some very intense NIMBY activism in the tenderloin. There have been massive down zonings, which means you say to people, you can use this property for fewer things, and you can use it less densely. And what that's done in the Tenderloin, even despite massive public housing investment in that district, there's high homelessness, there's low homeownership, there's no bars, there's no restaurants, and there's high crime. That's not the result that we want for Delaware, but that's what NIMBYism does. We don't want to be like that. If it can happen in the middle of San Francisco, which is basically paved with gold right now, it can certainly happen here. And that's what I'm asking you to help me stop. But it takes a village. <laughs> we all have to be part of the solution. So what I'm going to ask each one of you to do is take the yes in my backyard pledge. And here's how it goes. I will not oppose any project that is in compliance with its existing zoning designation. Now, 
Remember Bill sitting on the steps of Capitol Hill? So there's already been a legislative process in your city council, your county council, to decide how every piece of property in Delaware is zoned. And what that zoning designation says is, well, what can we do here? Can we do residential? Can we do manufacturing? Can we do retail? Participate in that process. But once it's over, once we've decided, as a society, this is what you can do here, we have to stop opposing those projects. Too much of my practice involves litigation over projects that comply with their zoning designation. That should not be happening. It's good for my business. It's very bad for Delaware's economy. And we just have to stop doing it. Now, in addition to not participating in NIMBYism and taking the YIMBY pledge, you also need to vote for your politicians who are supporting these projects. Politicians are very scared of NIMBYs, extremely afraid of not getting elected. So you have to tell them that you want them to support projects and they don't have to be afraid of what's going to happen at the ballot box. You've got to do it noisily. Also, educate yourself on yes in my backyard. Find out how it is getting into your pocketbook. Why, it's, why maybe you're not a homeowner because of NIMBYism. Why you don't have a higher paying job. How it's putting downward pressure on your wages. Why your kids are still living in your basement. Yes, I know you want to get them out. Well, if I can't get apartment ground approved here in Delaware, I can't help you. So you have to help me. Make me unnecessary. Now, I'm a lawyer, so of course there have to be footnotes. So there's you know, some caveats to NIMBYism. Don't give up on looking at health, safety, and welfare. I'm not saying that. There has to be transparency about that. We always have to understand the fire codes and the, um, the the ordinances that make sure that properties don't flood in the future, those are on the, on the books, but we have to make sure they work. But they can't become a cudgel just to get rid of a project that we don't like that complies with its zoning designation. So continue to demand transparency in those things, participate in the comprehensive plan process where we do the big planning in Delaware about what's gonna happen in the future. But after that, let's just put our heads down and just build it Delaware. Back in the 1930s, the Supreme Court decided that zoning ordinances were not an impermissible burden on our Fifth Amendment property rights. But today, it's time to move on to let zoning ordinances protect health, safety, and welfare, but not keep us from moving forward economically in Delaware. And that's why I say, please join me in Yes, in my backyard. Thank you very much.